1999, WWF, Russo books his buddy Jeff Jarrett to retain the IC belt until after his contract expires. Without contractual obligation, Jeff Jarrett says, I cannot wrestle more without my money. <laughs> and extort, what's the friendly term for extort? He legally ransoms <laughs> <laughs> roughly a quarter million from Vince to do one match, drop the belt at No Mercy 99 to China. Fair play to him. From then on, Jarrett was blackballed from the WWF, and they still do their best to never feature him. Late 99, Russo joins Jeff Jarrett in WCW, and the two run it into the ground. (laughs) WCW closes in 2001, and both are out of a job. Later that year, Jeff, his dad Jerry Jarrett, and Bob Ryder go on a fishing trip. Filthy hobbitses. (laughs) <laughs> I have been listening to that song so much since it's the Golden Nuggets. Amazing. <laughs> there, Jared realises if he wants to work in the USA, he'll have to make his own promotion. And he can, thanks to the seed money screwing Vince back in 99. He even mortgaged his house to get TNA off the ground. TNA? Yes, NWA TNA, total non-stop action. Vince Russo thought of it, obviously. Very, uh... Early 2000s edgelord. Yeah, yeah. Titchiners. <laughs> so it's kind of current, but difficult to take seriously. TNA needed financial backers. Health South had to pull out due to financial irregularities. <laughs> and Jeff Jarrett chatted to Dixie Carter, whose PR firm he worked with recently. He convinced her to convince her parents to get into the wrestling business. And TNA were in business. Billion dollar Panda Energy invested in TNA. If they didn't invest, they would have been dead in 2002. TNA started off with no TV deal. They did weekly pay-per-views for $9.95. Starting in June 2002, they did a total of 114 pay-per-views, bringing us up to September 2004. By then, they were big enough to sign a deal with Fox Sports, starting their weekly one-hour TV show, TNA Impact, out of Universal Studios. They cancelled their weekly pay-per-views and did monthly pay-per-views instead, starting with Victory Road 2004. In the fall of 2005, WWE moved Raw back to the USA Network, where they remained ever since, leaving a pro wrestling gap in Spike's lineup, and TNA swooped in. Well, it looks like boys, we're going to turn a boy. Uh huh. <laughs> Guys, it's great to be the king. It's good to be the king. We are the kings of wrestling. There was always two distinct sides to TNA. Their incredible homegrown talent, most notably AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, Samoa Joe, Abyss, and bringing in older ex WWF and WCW names like DDP, Hall, Nash, Raven, and the New Age Outlaws. Hall and Nash. The King of Wrestling. Yeah, the King of Wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> In September 2005, they hired the Dudley Boys, going under Team 3D. In November, Christian turned up, which was our impetus to start watching TNA. Totally. And in January 2006, Sting showed back up. In March, Scott Steiner. And their biggest ever signing in September, Kurt Angle. Actually, they didn't publicise it, but a few days prior to that, there was another important signing. TNA quietly rehired Vince Russo. Yeah. Ooh. Oh shit! It's Vince Russo! He was on the ground floor of TNA back in 2002 as both on screen and a writer, having his own faction of Sports Entertainment Extreme. Sex. What a twat. And he left when they started doing monthly pay per views, but now he's back. Instantly, the number of gimmick matches and frantic bullshit stips shot up. Tonight on Impact. A Christmas Chaos Cage Match, a Double North Pole Match, a Santa's Workshop Knockout Street Fight, a Silent Night Bloody Night Match, Grab the Reindeer Ladder Match, plus much, much more. 100% more. TNA is expanding to two full hours. TNA in 2007, they expanded Impact to two hours. They continued to hire ex-WCW and WWE talent like Booker T, Elijah Burke, Mick Foley, and push them over their own guys. 
2009, Jarrett's affair with Kurt Angle's wife goes public and Jarrett is put on a leave of absence. Dixie takes charge, all on time for January 4th, 2010. Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff come to TNA, brother, with both creative and on-screen roles. Hiring even more ex-WCW and WWE names like Ric Flair, Bob Van Damme, Mr. Anderson. Oh, my God. Jeff Hartley. (laughs) Val Venus. Yeah. The Nasty Boys. Which kicked off the infamous Monday Night Wars 2, which lasted how long? Seven weeks. Eight. Oh, ten weeks. Oh. You always have to ask this cunt for it. <laughs> <laughs> Under Hogan and Bischoff, we got some good bollocks, like returning Jeff Jarrett, becoming a custodian, flipping burgers, and his double MA gimmick. Ah, uh, double J, double MA. Tapping out kids. And some bad bollocks, like Joker Sting, who had a crow, a physical crow, Hulkster's magical Hall of Fame ring. Oh. <laughs> Yes! And that Dexter bloke, Samuel Shaw. I love the bit where Ken Anderson's in... He goes to Sam Shaw's house, and he has, like, Sam's bedroom. <laughs> and he's like, what do you do to my bedroom? <laughs> like, I said, what do you do to my bedroom? <laughs> and in 2013, the Aces and Eights, a biker faction gimmick a la the Sons of Anarchy, loved main event heel Bully Ray, but when they hired Brooke Hogan mm. to be in that angle... Get fucked. Absolutely. Most wrestling fans who watch TNA, when did you stop watching? Most people say Aces and Nights. Spike TV hated Russo's tasteless storylines, and Dixie assured them that he was gone. But Russo was secretly working as TNA creative consultant, which is obvious if you watch the show. Yes. And accidentally emailed his notes to PW Insider's Mike Johnson instead of Mike Tanay. TNA! <laughs> TNA! <laughs> It's amazing. He single-handedly killed this company's top run. Spike were furious. It came at the worst possible time as TNA's TV deal was just being renewed. Not anymore. Thanks, Russo. But at the end of the day, the blame has to fall at Dixie's feet. She's the gobshite who brought him back and she paid him. And she's the one who was in meetings with these guys lying to their faces. Yep. After nine years on Spike, their last broadcast was on Christmas Eve 2014. The nightmare of Dixie Carter has finally come to an end. The reign of terror of Dixie Carter is over. WCW lost its TV deal with TNT and died. ECW lost its TV deal with TNN and died. In 2014, TNA lost its TV deal with Spike, but lived. It joined Destination America in 2015, smashing pumpkins, Billy Corgan, he shook hands with Dixie Carter, smiling politely, (laughs) got on board as both on and off screen talent. He fucking loves wrestling and wanted to see it succeed. Later that year, TNA lost its TV deal again and lived. (laughs) (laughs) Haven't they made a massive tablet of this, you know, like... For their 15 years, they've been like, you didn't think we could do it, but we keep crawling back. (laughs) (sighs) They switched to Pop TV in January 2016. Every change, the deal gets worse. Pop was a TV guide channel. This time, TNA weren't being paid to produce TV. Mm. They just got to have a TV slot. So it's like a mutually beneficial deal. Pop gets in programming and TNA get to promote their house shows and pay-per-views. Although they don't want to do pay-per-views because every time they do a pay-per-view, they lose money because you need at least 9,000 buys. What are are they on these days? They only do two a year now, right? Yeah. They usually do the pay-per-views as kind of special impacts. Like this impact is called Destination X now. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously enough, after years of poor attendance, sagging ratings, and losing money every time you put on a pay-per-view, TNA were having serious financial problems. It's been super messy these last two years. In 2016, Billy Corgan loaned Dixie Carter $1.8 million and was made president. Anthem Sports bought in 85% of the company. Aralux having 10%. That's the company with the Nazy, the Blue Brothers. Oh my god, the fucking Ron and Don Harris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, leaving Dixie with 5% and a token role, squeezing out Billy Corgan completely, <laughs> who is now working with the NWA. He most certainly is. Billy Corgan actually bought the NWA. Ah, the noggers with attitude, yeah. <laughs> uh, so now with TNA, Anthem are in charge. Bischoff was asked if he'd buy TNA, and he said, I'm not in the market for a clown car. Oh, fuck. Brother Nero, I just had another premonition. The time is now. We must put our hands on Vanguard 1, and the expedition to God must begin. These massive changes were seen on TV as well. Talent-wise, a mass exodus of big names. Big, relative to TV. <laughs> <laughs> Velvet Sky. Oh. Magnus. Yeah. Bobby Roode. That one actually was a big loss because like Roode was there from like very early on, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. And of course, the biggest ones to leave, the broken Hardy Boys. Yeah. And even the returning crew who came back in 2017 have already left. Like, low-key. Do you see, he, he's going around in his um, hitman garb, but he doesn't have guns, and you know, obviously there's no tattoo in the back. So he just looks like a car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt Morgan, where's he? Yeah. And my boy Suicide hasn't been seen since August. Oh my god. But he came back, and he's still gone. <laughs> the lead is appropriate <laughs> <laughs> naming wise of the company ah shit <laughs> okay all of this is 2017 oh god January Anthem bring back Jeff Jarrett and he brings his boys back like Dutch Mantel March rebrand TNA to impact wrestling to get rid of the Dixie smell in June Jarrett convinces Anthem to merge impact with his own promotion Global Force Wrestling so impact took on the GFW name and green lights. So there was this massive title unification and stuff and extra titles and nobody cared. It was only Jeff Jarrett cares about this. <sighs> so that's that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett has been having alcoholism problems, which became public in the fall when he showed up to AAA as part of a GFW invasion, looking disheveled and drunkenly tossing tortillas out into the crowd. I believe the term you're looking for is off his tits. Triple A 25. So the company's now called GFW, and GFW let Jarrett go in October. But shit, they never finalised getting the GFW trademarks from Jarrett in the first place. GFW, GFW. No, sir. We changed back to Impact Wrestling. Oh, my God. Impact Wrestling. <laughs> oh, God. But hang on. Don't your belts still say GFW on them? They did. <laughs> I know where this is going. So, Stephen, the Impact After Bound for Glory, they unveiled the new Impact Wrestling title belts, which is the GFW belt with a big, dirty piece of metal on it that says Impact Wrestling. You wish, mate. It's a sticker. Oh, it's a sticker. It's an Impact Wrestling sticker. However, Steve, it gets better. They forgot to cover up the side plates. And so the side plates still have a big, dirty GFW. And, like, the camera is, like, all up in its grill <laughs> for the entire show. And it's all you can look at. They can't do an outdoor event now. Because they walk out and the fucking sticker <laughs> blow away. Where are the Impact Wrestling? Because you rebranded earlier in the year. Where's those belts? Yeah. Yeah, they could literally just bring them. Oh, they're the Burl's house. <laughs> 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 Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that and are now fully versed in Impact TNA, the company that lived. 